What's up guys, my name is Sam and today we're going to be looking at the 2021 High Level Maths Paper 1 Question 3. So today's question starts off with a fairly unique geometry question and then the question finishes with a very tricky logarithms question which requires a good knowledge of the laws of logarithms to be able to get all marks on. So let's take a closer look. So this is a geometry and algebra question worth 30 marks. So here we have a diagram on the right hand side which shows a cuboid with dimensions x, y and z centimetres and the areas in centimetres squared of three of its faces are also shown. So looking at part A, it says find the volume of the cuboid in the form a root b centimetres cubed. So the formula to find the volume of a regular cuboid with sides x, y and z is simply x times y times z. So we're actually just going to ignore that formula for the time being and try work through this question. So we've been given the area of the three faces of our cube board. So looking firstly at this near face, which is of area 2 root 2, we know that this rectangle has one side x and one side z. So the area of this rectangle will be given by x times z, which is equal to 2 root 2. Now, looking at this right hand side, which is of area 8 root 6, we can see that this is side y and one side z. So the area of this side will be y times z, which is equal to 8 root 6. And looking at our final face, which is of area 4 root 3, we can see it has one side of length x and one side of length y. And so we have x times y is equal to 4 root 3. So as you can see now, we have expressions for x times z y times z and x times y. So if we multiply all of these together, we'll be left with x squared times y squared times z squared. And what this will equal, it will be 2 root 2 times 8 root 6 times 4 root 3. So to find out what that is, we're going to use our calculator. And you can see that plucking these numbers into our calculator, we'll find that it is equal to 384. So we have x squared times y squared times z squared is equal to 384. And as you can see, we're getting close to this volume formula, which we had at the beginning. So all we have to do now is take the square root of both sides. So on the left hand side, we'll be left with our desired formula, which is x times y times z. And to find out the square root of 384, we're going to use our calculator. And as you can see, this will be equal to 8 times root 6. So now the question is complete and as you can see I've just written down our volume answer which is 8 times root 6 centimetres cubed and as always it is important to include your units to get full marks and full marks for this question will be 10 marks. Moving on to part b, part 1, it says given that our function f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 8x minus 35, find the two roots of f of x is equal to 0. So as we know there's two different ways of solving our quadratic equation. So we can either use A, the quadratic formula, or B, factorize the expression and solve for x. So today, we're going to use the first method, which is the quadratic formula. So let's remind ourselves of what that formula is. So we have that for when our quadratic formula is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So looking at our function, we can see that our x squared coefficient, or a, is equal to 3, our x coefficient, or b, is equal to 8, and our constant, c, is equal to negative 35. So now to solve this question, we simply must plug our values for a, b, and c into our quadratic formula to find our two roots of f of x. So as you can see, I've plugged in all our numbers, and now to simplify our expression, we're going to multiply out all our brackets. So after that, we have x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus 22 divided by 6. And from this, we can see that our two possible solutions are that x is equal to negative 5 or x is equal to 7 divided by 3. And this is our final answer for this question. And finding this will give you the full 10 marks for this question. Moving on to part 2, it says hence or otherwise solve the equation 3 to the power of 2m plus 1 is equal to 35 minus 8 times 3 to the power of n. 
So reading this and reading the hence or otherwise, you might immediately be thinking, how am I going to relate this to the previous part? And you may be looking at this equation and thinking, this is nothing like the quadratic I've just solved. It is completely fair enough if you have no idea how you're going to relate this equation to the equation in the previous part. However, we're going to work through it anyway. And first thing first, we're going to bring all the terms over to the left hand side. So after doing that, we're left with 3 to the power of 2m plus 1 plus 8 times 3 to the power of m minus 35 is equal to 0. And that is starting to look slightly more like the quadratic from our first part, which I've written in yellow just on the right hand side of our page. So to go further, we must rewrite this term 3 to the power of 2m plus 1 in a different way. So there is a way you can rewrite this. And as you can see, 3 to the power of 2m plus 1 is actually equal to 3 times 3 to the power of 2m. To show you how this makes sense, let's just say we have 2 to the power of 2. This can be written as 2 times 2 to the power of 1, as 2 squared is equal to 4, and 2 times 2 is also equal to 4. So as you can see, I've simply multiplied by 2 and dropped the power 2 by 1. And that is the exact same what I've done for 3 to the power of 2m. However, even after rewriting this like 3 times 3 to the power of 2m, it's not exactly like the quadratic we're looking for. And so we can actually rewrite this one more time as 3 times 3 to the power of n to the power of 2. So now that we can see that 3 to the power of 2m plus 1 is equal to 3 times 3m to the power of 2, let's rewrite down our equation and compare it to our quadratic in the previous part. By now, you should be able to realize that we've simply substituted 3 to the power of m instead of x from our quadratic from the previous part. So what we're going to do is we're going to let 3 to the power of m equal x and solve for m. So that's exactly what I've done. And so we have 3 to the power of m is equal to 7 over 3, or 3 to the power of m is equal to negative 5. However, 3 to the power of m is always greater than 0, as no matter what number you put in for m, when you raise a positive number to any exponent, it will always be greater than 0. And so that means 3 to the power of m cannot equal negative 5, so we're simply going to reject this equation. So now we're simply left with 3 to the power of m is equal to 7 over 3. So before we go any further and try to solve this equation, we're going to read our question and it says give your answer in the form m is equal to log base 3 of p minus q. So that log base 3 has given us a hint as to what we're going to do next. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply take the log base 3 of both sides. So on the left hand side we have the log base 3 of 3 to the power of m and that's simply just equal to m. And on the right hand side we have the log base 3 of 7 divided by 3. And we know from our laws and logarithms that this can be written as log base 3 of 7 minus log base 3 of 3. So now finally we have an expression for m. However, we're not done yet as log base 3 of 3 can be rewritten simply as 1. So finally, we are left with m is equal to log base 3 of 7 minus 1, which is precisely the type of answer that the question asks us for. And this is the correct answer. And this will give us the full 10 marks for this question. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope I was able to show you how to work out that first geometry question. And I also hope I've given you a great understanding into the laws of logarithms. So I hope you're having a really nice day and I'll see you guys soon.